partners and friends. I know that you are viewing us this morning from YouTube. Maybe you're viewing us from Facebook or maybe even Instagram. And you come in on, on Sunday mornings. You watch us. You enjoy the sermon. You enjoy our praise and worship. And you're wondering how you could connect with us more throughout the week. Well, guess what? We have that opportunity for you. Not only are we on, back on, on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram, you can join us Monday through Friday at 6.15 a.m. and at 12.15 p.m. where we have our daily prayer calls. 6.15 a.m. is our early morning. Early in the morning will I seek him. And then at 12.15, for those of you that are having break at lunch, just 15 minutes of power. On Saturdays, oh my goodness, we have one hour of a war call where we go before the Lord and we are warring for your deliverance, for your breakthrough, and for your healing. So if you want to connect with Impact Church DFW every day of the week, just call in to 385 799-9228 799-9228 that is 385-799-9228 and you can be a part of the greater impact community god bless you Welcome, welcome, welcome to our Impact Virtual Service. This is Impact's first service in the month of August, and we welcome you all. And before uh, uh, we get started, my name is Minister Sharon Gatson, and I am sitting here with Minister Becky Collier Hagler. And we would like to get ready to uh, invite our social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Please share and like because we would like for as many people that you know and we know have a good time worshiping the Lord with us today. And also, Minister Becky would like to let us know what is coming up in this month. We are celebrating our eighth church anniversary. Yes! Yes, amen. Eight years, eight, eight years, years of being impactors. Impactors. I remember... When I first went to Impact, how excited I was. I just wanted to be a part of the ministry so bad. I saw so many beautiful people. They you know, they opened up the door. They welcomed me yes. and my husband when we walked in. Uh, the service was awesome. It was just on point. Everything about it was great. And I was like, well, when is the pastor going to get through so I can go up and become a Partner. Yes, yes. So I really wanted to be a part so bad. So I am so thankful that I'm able to be here for the eighth anniversary. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And you know, uh, August the 14th is going to be our in person worship at the Double Tree Hotel in Richardson, Texas. And our service will start at 10 o'clock. So if you would like to come and join us in that worship service, we welcome you right now. We welcome you to come and be a part of that service. Not only are we having, uh, uh, celebrating our uh, eight years, we're also will be having what? I believe we're going to be doing communion that Sunday. Communion, yes, indeed. Yeah, so yes. We're excited about that. We want you all to come out and just uh, join in with us in this communion service yes. on our special day. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And we also have prayer calls. Our prayer calls Monday through Friday is from 6.15 a.m. and 12.15 p.m. And let me tell you, when Saturday comes, we have a war call yes, that do. happens from 9 a.m. to 10. And I'm sure that they would put the number on the screen to let you know exactly how you can call in and be a part of such a powerful, powerful 
prayer call. Powerful. Amen. So praying into the service is something that we do, and we would like to get ready to open with the word of prayer and, and thank God for what he has done for us in this. So, Father God, we come before you once again, Lord, welcoming in the Holy Spirit to have his way. Holy Spirit, come on in and show out like you do always, even in the virtual service. We ask right now, God, that you touch every family member, every soul that is here listening to the sound of my voice. God, we ask right now that you change, that you restore, that you make new, God, in the name of Jesus, those who are hurting, those who are, are going through a time of depression, God, we just ask right now that you meet them where they are. Meet them where they are, God, because we want to have an extraordinary prayer that goes forth throughout the airways. So God, have your way. Bless the service. Bless the musicians and our worship team that will be going forth. And bless the one who will be sending the message, God. Give us the ear to hear you. Give us the ear to receive you. Give us a heart to know that it's you that is speaking to us, God. In the name of Jesus, we want to worship you, God. We want to call out your name, and we want to praise you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know what we say? Let's go have some church. Have some church! <laughs> Well, come on, good morning, Impact. Let's give our God great praise in this room. Come on, in the rooms of your home, open your mouth and shout unto the Lord. For the Lord is good, his mercy is endured forever and ever. Come on, all you people, open your mouth and create an altar right where you are and command the heavens to come and see about you. Father, we lift glory to you. We lift honor to you this morning. We lift a timber up to you this morning. We say receive our worship. We say smile on it this morning, God. Yes, God. We say receive it now, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's do it. Glory and honor is to him. Say. Glory and honor is Come on, can we raise it? Come on. Glory and honor. Raise a real big yell, come on. Glory and honor is to him, yeah. Glory and honor is to him. See, he's the source. Hey, strength for me, come on.
with our awesome praise and worship team. Now we are getting ready to go before the very throne room of God. And we are going to be led in prayer by our own minister, Sharon Gadsden. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, we want to come before you right now, lifting up our children. God, it is time to go back to school. Yes. And we ask and we pray that you cover our children, God. We plead the blood of Jesus over each and every soul that is going into elementary, into middle, into high school, mm -hmm. and even college, God. They are our babies, and we ask that you cover them and protect them. Protect the teachers, God, that are taking time to, to teach and, and share what they have learned to our children. So, Father God, we just want to praise you and lift you up, God, for we know that your angels is going to be all over the place where our children are and protect them. And God, as we get ready to go into another level of the service, mm -hmm. we ask that you bless our pastor, God. We ask that you bless him with the rhema word that God has given him, that it will touch the marrow, the bone, the soul of your people, God, mm -hmm. that healing would take place, restoration would take place, delivering would take place in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we just want to lift you up and give you praise. We want to honor you, God, for what you're about to do. Holy Spirit, have your way. Spirit of the living God, have your way and do what you do best in this service. Amen. 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 Let us have some church. Amen. Amen. We won't be quiet and we won't be ashamed. We will As you will, no matter how long, we'll keep on praying to believe nothing can stop you. You will remain always. You stand forever. You stand.
say we want you. Only if you want it for real, say we want you. We want you. We want you. We make you our choice this morning, Lord. So we want you. Hey everybody, this is Dr. Kwesi Kamau and I want to welcome you to Impact Worship Online. Today we're going to be looking at the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 31b. So grab your Bibles, your tablets, your cell phones, whatever it is that you use to access the Word of God. We're going to be looking at the last chapter of Nehemiah, the last part of the last verse. Nehemiah chapter 13, verse 31b. And here's what it says. Remember me with favor, my God. Remember me with favor, my God. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus right now that you will speak in this moment to your people. I pray right now, Lord, that we might begin to see you afresh in the spaces where we are and that we will know that not only do you meet us in all times and in all spaces, but you meet us in the different kinds of times and spaces that we find ourselves in. And you work all things together for the good, for those that love you and are the called according to your purpose. We lift this up to you right now in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Now this scripture here, these, these last six words, of the book of Nehemiah speak powerfully and explosively into our lives, we have to name some things right now. We are in a different kind of world. We're in a different kind of space, a different kind of time. We, we can always talk about the preponderance of information and, um, and engagement. Um, we, we, we have moved from letters to telephones to faxes to emails to tweets and IG posts and reels. Uh, we have moved from uh, regular black and white TV to color TV to techno, techno color to um, now all different brands of realism within our technology and television broadcasts. We, we have gone from uh, just legacy TV to cable, and, and, and now we are dealing with Facebook and YouTube. Um, and so we, are, we have to take note and take acknowledgement of how the ways in which we are engaging with the world is, is changing who we are and how we look at the world. I'm telling you right now that there is a uptick in anxiety on all levels. Right now, 70% of Generation Z are in some form of clinical treatment for anxiety. Uh, and and that, is, that is the uh, swell, but the reality is on all generational levels, we are dealing with stuff. You know, we were actually designed to be able to be face to face. We, we receive from each other energy and power when we're able to look at each other's in the eye, when we are able to be face to face and we're able to um, feel the love and the attachment and the connection that comes uh, in human relationships. But we have found ourselves over the last several years because of pandemics and because of um, profilings and because of injustices and all of these kinds of things, not only 
uh, unable to uh, do the face-to-face -face the way that we need to and the way that we want to. But then we're also drawn to a level of, of skepticism and, and, and distrust when we are looking each other in the face because we are wondering what's really going on behind the eyes that are looking back at us. Listen, the, the, we are in this world that, the, that we are feeling more um, isolated and alone. We are, we are feeling distinctly um, pigeoned in and we are, we are feeling uh, a, a sense of, of having some kind of invisible barrier. Uh, over our lives. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to some people right now who are dealing with sickness in their body. You've never been sick like this before, but all of a sudden this, this, this sickness is continuing to overtake you. It's like I, I've had colds before, but these colds don't leave. Or I, I've had headaches before, but these headaches seem just to, to linger on. They may diminish in intensity, but they continue to remain. I'm talking to some people who are feeling tired and fatigued. If, you, if you're hearing me today, I, I want to encourage you to say amen. To put it in the chat. That's me. That's me. That's me. I, I'm talking to some people right now that are trying to find different ways in order to deal with self-care um, because you are distinctly and acutely feeling like I need to take care of me. And, and you can see that it's not just you because um, in all of these venues and mediums that we look at, um, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, you got to take care of yourself and, and people are rushing and running to different vacation spots and different places uh, in order to find some ways to feel better about their lives. Uh, but but somehow, some way uh, you do that and then you come back and then you got to face this same stuff all over Again, you know, um, the Bible talks about this in, in Matthew chapter 17 in a powerful way. Um, here you have now uh, Peter and James and John uh, on a short but, but amazing retreat and experience with Jesus. Um, and let me just read it to you so that you can get the full picture. Uh, 17 verse 1 of, of Matthew, after six days. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And there he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. And Peter said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for for Elijah, while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Now, in this story, what we're finding is that Jesus takes uh, his three in his innermost circle, his, 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 his deep his deep squad, his, his homies, his boys. I mean, all the disciples were, were tight with Jesus and, and the 12 disciples, the women that were with them, everybody was tight with Jesus. But these three cats right here were the ones that Jesus really got deep with. These are the ones that Jesus really went in with. And so Jesus takes these guys and they go up this high mountain and, and, and in this space, you know, when they go up this high mountain, the Bible, if you read, it says six days later, six days from what? Six days from Jesus having conversation with his disciples about the fact that Jesus was going to go through some stuff, that he was going to deal with crucifixion, that he's going to be betrayed, all these kinds of things. Six days after um, the naming of the stress of the moment, you know, you can go through stress, but how sometimes you just got to look at it and say what it is. Well, Jesus was, was in a moment in the last chapter naming what that stress was all about. And so they, they six days later, are leaving that space of stress and, and, and Peter, James, and John going up the mountain with Jesus, get a, ha get a chance to have, watch this, a glorious glorious experience, a, a powerful experience where, where it no longer mattered what was going on on the downside of the mountain, but up the mountain, that's that's where the power was. That, that's where, where the world looked better. That's where I felt better. This was like being um, vacating the world for a minute so that you could, you could just be in a place where ain't no stress, ain't no worry. And so when Jesus 
is transfigured and this glorious experience happens. And on top of that, now you have a connection with the past. You have a connection with Moses and a connection with Elijah. Oh, now Peter's feeling right. He's feeling good. He's feeling connected up on top of that mountain with the glory and the bright light and all of that. And Peter says, hey, let's set up some tents. Now, the major point of the story is that Peter was not giving the priority to Jesus. That's the major part of the story. But an underlying important point is that Jesus, that, that Peter, I mean, didn't want to come off that mountain. He wanted to set up some tents. He wanted to stay there as long as he could. And I think you and I can understand why. Because when, because if we can get away from, you know, the everyday life stress, we can find a place where we found rest. We don't want to come back to this stuff. And it used to be that we could come back with a with a level of refreshment and energy, but but coming back now seems like we're feeling as tired as we were before we left. And so there has to be a word that can help us, watch this, be able to have the strength and joy and energy while we're in it, while we're dealing with the everyday. And I want you to know that that word is here. Nehemiah's prayer to God is a powerful prayer of access that gives us the ability to turn the light switch on again in our stressful, um, you, know, you know, disorienting world. The ability to, to not just face danger, because you know it's not just danger that's dragging us. It's, it's it's not just it's not just the troubles that's dragging us. It's something something more, something more. That's just that's just if you were bathing us in molasses and 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 making us just sticky and 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 not feeling right about things. Yes, but God can clear all of that up. But it's going to require us to know how to access that grace. Now, Nehemiah, at the end of his book, has experienced the kinds of things that I'm talking about. Now, obviously, he's not, we're not talking about the technology aspects. But we are talking about the profound grief that one has about the world. If you look in the book of Nehemiah, um, beginning with chapter one, we see um, where this happens, right? Um, Nehemiah um, is serving as um, the cupbearer of the king. Now, um, beyond being someone who is, um, you know, just related to the king's diet, the cupbearer was one of the king's most trusted advisors. All right, um, Nehemiah um, is in a in a significant senior position within the empire of the Persians. Now he is at this place when when he gets um, some Facebook tests and some uh, and some uh, Instagram uh, posts where where he finds out. Um, the true state of, of his world, right? Um, the Bible says, in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, this is verse 1, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers came from Jerusalem with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. And they said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province, are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. See, Nehemiah has just gotten the news. Nehemiah has, has, has read about 
the world that he cares about, right? You know, and 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 his heart drops, right? The Bible says in verse four, when I heard these things, I sat down and wept. And for some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Now, um, it says this happened for some days. Well, listen, months later, look at verse, look at chapter two. Um, and and here's what it, here's what it testifies. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King um Artaxerxes or Ahasuerus, uh, when wine was brought for him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before. So the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This cannot be nothing but sadness of heart. Listen, that's what some of us are dealing with. Let's, let's go ahead and name it for what it is. It's sadness. It's sadness of heart. It, it's sadness because of things that ha have happened in our lives that have happened here and happened there. Not like things haven't happened before, but it's different now, it feels. It's sadness of heart. It, it, there, are, there are circumstances that, that are not going our way. There are things that are happening that are just dragging on our lives. There, 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 there are things that we have been able to stand for and stand by that just aren't there anymore. I, I, I have recently talked about my own personal experience of, of having the the uh, the legs of the chair uh, wiped from under me in various times in my life. Listen, I want you to understand, beloved, that that this is a sadness, a sadness of heart. Now, now it, 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 it's not something that Nehemiah could just get over. And the Bible says that he prayed about it. Mm. He prayed about it. He 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 was asking God, you know, and and begging God to do something about it. But 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 it it just was still there in his heart. Amen. Now, here's the deal. Nehemiah's prayers were not unheard. And I want to tell you something to somebody right now, that your prayers are not unheard. You, you may feel like God has abandoned you. You may feel like God is, is uh, not listening or maybe too busy with other things. But I want you to know that your prayer, your prayer is being heard because the Bible tells us that that in this moment when the king calls Nehemiah out and says what's wrong, then the Bible says that Nehemiah realizes it's a God moment. Look at look at the scripture with me again. Again, the king said, "Ask me why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of heart." I was much afraid, but verse three. But I said to the king, "May the king live forever." Why should my face not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Now, Nehemiah gets the opportunity to name some stuff, the brokenness in his heart, what's really going on, what's really dragging him. And he, was, he's, he doesn't want to say it, but, he, but, but he's afraid to even talk about it. But the Bible says that God drew him into this conversation. Um, and the king answers and says, what is it that you want? And look at this word. It says, then I prayed to the God of heaven. Nehemiah recognized that this was, yes, a God moment. Yes, that, that you know, all of the sadness and the sorrow and all the crying and the anguish and the prayers um, and the lifting up to God has now brought him to this moment. And so Nehemiah pounces on the opportunity where he prays to God and says, God, I see you at work. Now let me follow you. This is how Nehemiah then begins to operate throughout the rest of the book. Nehemiah gets to a place where he, he translates his sadness into strength. Yes, he translates his sadness into strength and he moves forward. So I am now going to own this situation. I see that there are things that are around me that need to be dealt with. And listen, you know what anxiety is? You, you, you want to know what the gripping, the grip of the sadness of heart is all about? It is seeing things that need to be done and feeling like you don't have the power to do anything about it. It's seeing a problem, but not having a solution. It's seeing an issue and not having a fix. And so Nehemiah crying out to God out of the sorrow of his heart, 
feeling like everything is yet still lost, having the sad face, realizes in the moment that God shows up that God is moving and Nehemiah says, I am going to follow God and what God is doing. That's what he does. And he moves into that and God gives him favor. Check that word out. F-A-V-O-R, favor. Now, we, we use that word in a lot of different kinds of ways. We ask somebody to do me a favor, amen? Uh, or we, we talk about having favor or what have you. But, but the, in, in this context, in this biblical sense, then what we're seeing is that God now has a mark on Nehemiah's life that causes blessings and strength and, and, and provision and everything that is needed to come into his life. God, through the king, gives Nehemiah authority. God, through the king, gives Nehemiah resources. And Nehemiah gets to work, gets to work. And he operates in his favor. Now, we'll talk more later um, about the rest of the story and how Nehemiah goes to Jerusalem to rebuild the walls and the gates and to restore the hope of his people. We'll talk about that um, as, as, we can, as we proceed through the book of Nehemiah. But I want you to understand this, that Nehemiah went through many different obstacles and challenges along the way. He had obstacles based on the fact that the resources were not enough. He had obstacles based on the fact that the people were not united. He had obstacles based on the fact that there were enemies that were outside trying to stop his progress. He had obstacles based on danger seen and unseen. He had obstacles based on the unfaithfulness of the people that were walking with him. All of these kinds of things happened in the midst. And so, you know, when you are stepping out to make something better and then you face these obstacles along the way, then sometimes your sadness can turn to fear. Your sadness can turn to um, anger even. Your sadness can turn into despair, right? But, but Nehemiah, Nehemiah kept a source of light and strength that was so powerful that it not only lifted him, but it lifted everybody else around him. How did this work? What Nehemiah does is he prays consistently the prayer that we see listed at the end of the book. Remember me with favor, my God. He, he prays this direct prayer, this powerful prayer. This specific prayer, remember me with favor, my God. He kept his eye on God and he beseeched God to keep God's eye on him. He recognized that the world is going to be the world. Situations are going to be what they are. But if I can just stay tapped in to God's favor, then I'm going to be all right. And so he learned how to pray that prayer, that amazing prayer. Now, let, let's break the prayer down so we can understand how, why it's so powerful. The first thing that he prays is remember me. Remember me. Nehemiah is saying to God right now, God, I am walking your walk. I am moving in the faithfulness of my heart to you. Know me for who I am and remember me. Yes, I may have done some things wrong and Nehemiah did some things wrong. Yes, I may have made some mistakes, 
Yes, I am frail and I have problems. But God, if you remember me, then I know that all things will be well. We have to learn how to throw ourselves upon the grace of God. Everything that we are doing is not going to get done by our own strength, understanding, will, cleverness, ability. No, it's going to be done because God is with us. And so Nehemiah stayed focused on that fact. If you don't stay focused on that fact, you will be counted out by confusion. Okay? You will be you will be wrapped up with guilt. You will be halted in your heart because of shame. Nehemiah says, no, no. I'm not doing this in my own strength or by my own, my own power. I am walking this walk with my God. And so he calls on God and says, remember me. Remember me. See me. You, you called me, remember me. Look at me. I'm out cheering around God. I, I, I'm out cheering now. I, I, I don't know what else to do, but, 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 but to call on you, remember me. Remember me. Somebody ought to shout it in the, shout it in the chat right now. Remember me. I, I, I'm the one that, that wakes up in the morning to call on your name and pray. Re remember me. I, I, I'm the one that goes into the places where the people are hungry to provide food. Remember me. I, I'm the one that gets on the phone and calls on people and praise with them. Remember me. I, I am the one that gives of my, my talent and my treasure and my and my gifts. I give those unto you and unto others to be a blessing. Remember me. I, I, I know that there's some people that I'm talking to right now and you may feel forgotten, but what you have to do is realize that God hasn't forget, forgotten you. But in order to get into the realization of that, then you need to lift up your head and cry out to God and say, God, remember me. I, I know you are faithful, God. I know you are true, God. I know you are just God. And so right now, I need you to show up in my life. I, I need you to rise up right now, oh God, and let your enemies be scattered. Remember, remember me, remember me. And, and, and then the second part is, is with favor, with favor. God, I, I, I need you to continue to provide. I, I need you to continue to keep my health in line. I need you to continue to show up in circumstances and situations. I need you, God, to go before me when I walk into the room. I, I need you, God, to go behind me when I walk out the room. I, I need you, God, to surround me with your favor and your grace and your glory. God, I, I need you to give me your favor. I, I need you when I, when I speak that you step up. When I pray before my words can even hit the ground, you move on my behalf. I, I'm not here for myself, God. I, I'm not here by myself, God. I, I've come with your Holy Spirit, and I'm asking right now, Lord, that your favor will move on my behalf, Lord God. Lord, I, I don't have time to be worrying about whether I can pay my bills, Lord. I don't have time to be worried about whether my kids are going to be all right. I, I don't have time to be time to be worried about all these other kinds of things, God. I, I want to be focused on what you called me to, so I'm asking you right now, to give me some tangible favor. I need you to give me some tangible favor. I, I need you to fix some things that I don't need to have to. I may be able to fix them on my own, but I ain't got time to fix everything. So God, I need you to start surrounding me. Give me the people that I need to have. Give, give, give me the resources that I need to have. Give, give me the relationships that I need to have. Open up the doors that I did not see. I need your favor. I need your favor to move in my life right now, Lord God. I need you to go and do the stuff that I don't even know how of you. I need your favor. Remember me with favor. And then he says, my God, my God. That, that, that last part is the most powerful part. That last part is saying unto God, <coughs> I am yours and you are mine. We are in covenant relationship together. I'm leaning on your everlasting arms. I'm trusting in the Lord until I die. I know that I have a God who is on my side. I know 
that yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because my God is with me. His rod and his staff, they shall, they shall comfort me. Yes, I will stand in the presence of my enemies, but there'll be a table that's set before me because of my God who is with me. I, I ain't showing up nowhere by myself. I know that it's not even by the faithfulness of my prayer, but I know that my God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that I can ask or think. My God is willing and able. My God loves me and he's powerful enough to save me. My God is my caller. My God is my maker. My God is my creator. My God is my savior. My God is my redeemer. My God is my way maker. That's who I call on. Not any God. Not some God. But my God. You are my God. And I put my trust in you. And I want you to know that this prayer that Nehemiah prayed recentered him. It kept him focused until the walls got built. It kept him focused until the people got blessed. It kept him focused until God's people were restored to God's law. It kept him focused until his enemies were made his footstool. It kept him focused so that this testimony could be given to us in the Holy Writ of Scripture. I want us to know we can't stay on the mountaintop all the time. We've got to come back into the valley. And it seems like the valley is a different kind of valley right now. But I want you to know that when you keep your eye on the prize and call on God saying, remember me with favor, my God, you will have the light on with the energy and the strength and the grace and the peace and listen and the joy the joy and the connection that you need in order to bring light to life beloved the reason why we can know this is true is because my god and yours the word became flesh and dwelt among us in the wild and that word did not just dwell to reveal, but that word dwelled to redeem. And the entire life of Jesus is our redemption. And we can know that we, that God remembers us because of Jesus. We can know that we have favor because of Jesus. We can know that God is our God because of Jesus. And beloved, I, I want to invite you into a deeper relationship with Jesus. You may be somebody who has kind of wandered around the church for a long time, but you know that you need a deeper relationship with Jesus. Or you might be somebody who is watching that God has just simply brought to hear this message in this moment. And now you recognize that the thing that you've been missing is a my God relationship. I want to let you know about Jesus. Jesus Christ died for you and me. He died for you and me so that he could face all the consequences of the sins that we have committed. Because we have tried to live our lives in one way or another without God. The messes that we made, Jesus faced. All of those consequences so that when Jesus, when we come to him, those consequences are applied to us and we have the opportunity of seeing the sinfulness of our sin and humbling ourselves to say, I want to follow after you, God. 
Jesus Christ died for you and for me so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And I invite you, I invite you to believe on Jesus, to step into Jesus, to receive Jesus and his great gift of life and the Holy Spirit. And so I invite you today, my brother, my sister, no matter how young, no matter how old you are, no matter what color you are, what country you're in, Jesus has come for you and is calling you right now. Won't you answer? If you want to answer, I invite you to pray this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please come into my life and make me the person that you want me to be. I put my trust in you. I put my hope in you. Thank you for your forgiveness that cleanses me of all my sin. And I come now, Lord, that I may know how to walk your righteous and resurrection life. I want to be able to say, you God are my God. Like Nehemiah was able to say, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Beloved, your seeking after God is really a result of God seeking after you. So when you prayed that prayer, that prayer was not just reaching out to God. It was you receiving the God who's been reaching out to you. And God is working in your life even right now for transformation. Now, part of God's process is to work in you through the Holy Spirit. That God, God's self, comes into your life to work on you on the inside. But to help you to recognize how the Spirit is working and what the Spirit is doing, God has also provided you a family. And we call it the church. Now, the church is not a building. The church is a people. And we want to be the people to help you become all that God would have you to be. And so I invite you to go to our website at icdfw.org so that we might connect together. When you click the connect button on our website, you can give your name and information, email, phone number, all of that. So for wherever you are in the world, we can be in touch with you. And we can encourage and help direct you in the ways that are going to cause you to be healthy, whole, and to grow. We are God's people, and we are your family. And we want to encourage you even now. So go to icdfw.org. I'm sorry, icdfw.org, and click the connect button so that we can connect even now. This is Pastor Kwesi Kamau. And I want to thank you again for worshiping with us and for sharing in the prayer, the song, and the word. Now, I'm grateful for what God has done and is doing in your life. And I'm praying that we might continue to be an encouragement to you in that work. Now, we are Impact Church. We are anointed to make an impact. We don't just talk about it. We be about it. Our mission is to love you to life. And I want you to know that it's Jesus that's doing it through us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and give you peace. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
thank you, Impact Partners and Friends, for your generous support of God's work at Impact Church. Because of your faithful generosity, our church is able to touch the lives of our family and community in meaningful and impactful ways, including sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have three ways for you to continue to support the Impact Ministry. You can visit icdfw.org to give online or text ICDFW to 77977 to give by text. And lastly, you can mail your gift to our new post office box. Whichever way you choose to give, we are thankful for your generosity. It's because you choose to give cheerfully and generously that Impact is able to continuously accomplish our mission of transforming lives and transforming a generation. Thank you for joining us today for Impact Worship Online. You know, our outreach online is tagged life.love. What that means is that we want to transform your life with the love of God. We pray that you have felt that love today in the song, in the prayer, and in the word that has been delivered. I want for you to know that God is yet working miracles in our lives. We want to connect with you. So we're gonna ask you to go to our website at icdfw.org and click the connect button. When you do, you'll be able to share your testimonies, you'll be able to share your prayer requests, and certainly, if you've given your life to Jesus, you'll be able to share that as well. We wanna connect with you so that we can share the love of God that will transform your life. This is Pastor Kwesi Kamau, and we are Impact Church. We are anointed to make an impact. We don't just talk about it, we be about it. God bless you.